Uncover the shocking secret behind a wife's betrayal. When my devout Mormon wife reached out to my abwife mom, the consequences were disastrous. Tune in for a heart-wrenching tale of forgiveness and redemption. But first, my parents won't attend my wedding, new update. Posted by Deleted. My parents won't attend my wedding, and here's why. Short story. At 24, female, I find myself in a heartbreaking situation. My parents won't be at my wedding. The reason? I refuse to invite their friends, I'll call them the Scots, who made my life a living hell during the year I lived in their guest house. From false accusations to disrespecting my fiancé, things reached a breaking point. Fast forward to wedding planning, and the Scots became a point of contention. When I stood firm on not inviting them, it led to a family fallout. Despite my attempts to mend things, my parents are boycotting the wedding. Long story. In 2021, fresh out of college, I moved to a new state for a job. Facing high rent, the Scots, family friends of my parents, offered me their guest house for a mere $300 a month. Little did I know, this seemingly sweet deal would lead to a year of turmoil. The Scots, longtime friends and business partners of my parents had three kids. As soon as I settled in, the Scots became excessively involved in my personal life, particularly my relationship. The situation took a dark turn as they fabricated scenarios to my parents, accusing me of promiscuity, rarely being home, and even planning to secretly move in with my boyfriend. Their disdain for my boyfriend was palpable, treating him with passive aggression, condescension, and even making derogatory comments about him being adopted. The interference escalated with family meetings where they labeled me as a poor influence on their teenage daughter, criticizing my boyfriend, whom they had met only three times. And I have to add my boyfriend and I don't drink or smoke and both have careers. My boyfriend is a perfectly good man and was always respectful to them, despite their poor treatment. The dad of the Scott family went to the extent of sharing his marriage problems and lack of a sex life, blurring the boundaries of landlord-tenant, inappropriate relationships. The breaking point came when the fridge in the guest house broke and they insisted I foot the bill for a $900 replacement. Their influence over my parents was significant, as my parents rarely had my back and sided with the Scots, constantly belittling my boyfriend without reason. By the end of 2022, I decided to move out with some girlfriends of mine, leaving without saying goodbye to avoid further confrontation. Fast forward to the summer of 2023, my boyfriend and I were living together in a new state, and he proposed. To my surprise, when he asked my parents for their blessings, they were supportive and enthusiastic. My parents were even flown out to witness our engagement. As we delved into wedding planning in the fall of 2023, my fiancé's parents generously offered to finance the wedding. Strangely, my mother declined involvement in the planning, claiming she hated it. Despite repeated invitations from myself and my future mother-in-law, she insisted we handle everything on our own, a departure from the typical involvement of the mother of the bride. My mother-in-law did fly my mom out to Nye for wedding dress shopping, which was fun, but my mother insisted on the trip that this was all she wanted to do. Winter 2023 brought a text from my dad urging me to invite the Scots. I respectfully declined, citing the distress it would cause me on our special day. This refusal triggered a nuclear war within the family. My parents, adamant about the Scots' inclusion, declared they wouldn't attend the wedding. My dad accused me of starting my happy life by destroying his, and my mother uninvited me to Christmas. In attempts to salvage the situation, I apologized and tried to explain my decision. However, my parents were unreceptive, hurling insults and baseless accusations claiming my side of the family has been cancelled. My mother then flipped the scripted and threatened to expose details on social media of my disrespect to the family, if I didn't show up for Christmas. Despite exchanging Christmas and birthday greetings, via text I've not spoken to them about the situation, the pain of their absence and the harsh words lingers as I approach my wedding day. I am confused, I am guilty, I am in pain. The fallout, all because I refused to invite the Scots. OP added an edit to the original post. Thank you, Woo French Kissy Toast, for letting me know about it. Edit, we are having a destination wedding and the festivities will begin three days prior to the wedding. So if caved in and invited the Scots, I would have to endure up to four days of them. I don't want to walk around the resort and turn around and have to see them and instantly get into a bad mood. Also, I'm afraid if my parents decide to show up without the Scots that they will cause drama. Fanny. And now to the update. Context from my original post. At 24 female, I find myself in a heartbreaking situation. My parents won't be at my wedding. The reason? I refuse to invite their friends. Update. I woke up this morning to a bunch of texts from my mother. She demanded that I end my engagement, cancel the wedding, quit my job, and move back to their home. She started saying things like I know you are unhappy. 
It's okay, you tried. Now it's time to come home. You have some maturing you need to do. This irks me so much. My parents literally gave their blessings for my marriage six months ago. Now they want me to change my entire life because they're mad they didn't get their way. I responded and said this is my life, and if they don't want to respect my decisions, that's on them. But I am in utter shock. I am financially independent of my family. I have a great job, loving partner. How do my parents come up with this crap? Hash hash new update. And now to the next update. Update part 2. My parents won't attend my wedding. Please read my 24-year-old female. First two posts for context, I'm linking them in the comments. Long story. Three months have passed since my parents declined attending my wedding. Initially I found peace and acceptance, looking forward to celebrating with those who would be present and knowing my parents wouldn't be there to ruin it. However, a text from my younger brother, 19-year-old male, shattered that peace, revealing that our parents threatened to kick him out of the house and abandon him financially if he attends my wedding. This utterly crushed me, I am so close with my brothers and I love them dearly. I have three brothers aged 19, 22, and 27. While my older brother lives independently, my two younger siblings still live with our parents. Despite my parents' decision to not come to the wedding, I told my brothers how badly I want them to attend, assuring them of my support. After their shared support, I booked their travel, optimistic about their participation. I was naive to believe our parents would accept this decision. Their subsequent outbursts targeted my brothers, leveraging financial threats to dissuade them from attending, claiming they are betraying the family by supporting me. I offered to financially assist my brothers if they still want to attend knowing they'd get kicked out, but I realized the difficulty of abandoning familiarity. In response to this outburst, my brothers called me and proposed an intervention, aiming to address broader familial issues, aka, the bigger picture of my parents being alive. I tried my best to explain this was a bad idea. I pleaded. Despite my reservations, I supported them by a phone call. I felt I was bound by sibling loyalty. Yesterday's call confirmed my fears. Amidst vile accusations, I endured personal attacks, ranging from insults against my fiancé to baseless critiques of our life choices. My father's tirade, marked by verbal abuse, culminated in a cruel dismissal of my feelings. Here are a few notes I took during the two-hour intervention. 1. My fiancé is not an intellectual because he likes to snowboard and doesn't know how to have intellectual conversations. 2. My fiancé doesn't have royal or noble blood and therefore cannot have intelligent children. 3. It was rude for my fiancé to not bring flowers or wine when he flew from another state for the day to ask for my hand in marriage. 4. My decision to change my job and move to a new state with my fiancé is a manipulation tactic. 5. My dad said calling people names and insults is the right thing to do when you are mad. 6. My dad said by my decision to change my career path is stupid and I am cutting him out of his life. 7. Thinks my fiancé's job as a salesman makes him a loser. 8. My parents are mad I never offered to invite my uncle that I haven't seen in 13 years who lives in Russia. Literal what the heck moment for me. 9. My dad says my relationship is wrong and he's not happy about it. Says it would be smart to break up. 10. My dad says he regrets not punching my fiancé in the face when he asked for his blessings and says it will haunt him for the rest of his life that he didn't punch him. Says the only reason he gave his blessings was to not hurt my feelings. 11. Says my fiancé's parents are mean for not responding to their texts. 12. Called my fiancé's mom a B-word. 13. Said everyone at my engagement party is unintellectual and a redneck, and that they were shocked at the crowd I've decided to live around. 14. The last minute of call consisted of my dad screaming at the top of his lungs that I am stupid, an idiot, dumb, and a B-word. I started hysterically crying at this point, I felt like a little girl again. 15. He called me a liar when I explained all the horrible things his friends did to me and why I didn't want to invite them to the wedding. He even called me a liar when I explained that his friend, 70-year-old male, would try to talk about his sex life with me. Thus. 16. Crying I explained to my dad, I just wish you cared about my feelings too, because I am also really hurt and just want you to understand my perspective. He said, Why the F should I care about your feelings? You don't respect me my friends or my values. F your feelings you stupid B word. I ended the call right there. After the call my brothers said they will still be attending my wedding because this has become an issue of standing up to my father's unacceptable behavior. Despite my brother's attempts at defense, we were outmatched by our father's narcissism. Enduring the call was agonizing yet crucial for my siblings to witness his true nature. Gaslit and invalidated, I felt feel so dehumanized.
I never thought I would someday block my parents. Today marks day one of going no contact. Shoulder. My parents threatened to kick my youngest brother, 19-year-old male, out of the house if he attends my wedding. My brothers, 1922 and 27, decided to host an intervention that blew up in all of our faces as we were no match for my father's narcissism. Now I've blocked my parents and the fate of my brothers attending my wedding is unknown. What do you think? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. It's disheartening to see how a simple request from the daughter led to such a destructive family intervention and ultimately resulted in no contact with her parents. My 27-year-old male wife, 26-year-old female, crossed the only line I ever set with her. How can I forgive her? Posted by Deleted. My wife and I have known each other for 10 years and got married in 2018. We have very different lifestyles, she's a very devout Mormon, and I am not religious. We found some way to make it work, it was a hard road, but there are some challenges still, but we love each other very much. She has never met my biological mother. My parents were divorced long before I met her, and I broke contact with my mom after I turned 18. My mom was extremely abwife towards me growing up. She physically roped me and my sister regularly and tried to frame it on my father. She was able to manipulate a doctor to give me multiple medications growing up and she'd steal the meds. Her dirt boyfriend also tried to be a wife to me too. I cut my losses and cut all contact with my mother and her family. So did my sister. My parents' dad and stepmom didn't approve of my wife at first because of her religion, but they get along now. When my wife asked me when she'd meet my mom, I told her she never would, she's a violent and terrible woman, and she has no place in my life, and I didn't want her involved in ours. I also told her not to contact anyone in my mom's family. Recently my mom showed up at my work, which she had no knowledge of. It got ugly and police had to be called to remove her from the property. It was such an embarrassment. When I got home, I told my wife, and she just had her, oh crap, look on her face. I asked what that was about, she confessed she reached out to my mom and told her where I worked because my mom wanted to make amends. My wife's beliefs are that everyone deserves forgiveness and doesn't believe something could be unforgivable. I told her that violated the one thing I told her was out of bounds and didn't even tell me until crap hit the fan. She of course has been apologetic, I told her we'd get there but I needed to get through it. I have been sleeping in the office at home and we have barely spoken since. We are supposed to travel to her parents for Thanksgiving, but I'm really considering staying home with the dogs so I can sort myself out. I am not sure how to get over this. Edit. Added that she's met my stepmom, she's also fully aware of what my mom did to us. Told her, my wife connected with my abwife mom that I cut contact with and it caused a scene at work and the police to be involved. She admitted to doing it behind my back, and I am just beyond upset. I don't know how to forgive her. And now to the update. I appreciate the support of those who messaged me as well as those curious what happened. I didn't expect this to blow up. I'll give an update in chronological order, but trigger warning. Details about childhood abuse is mentioned. The original post is the only other post on my profile. Get this out of the way. Mom was served with a restraining order. She can't go on my work property and I suffered no issues at work because of what happened. Leading up to Thanksgiving, my wife and I sat down to talk. I said I wasn't going to go to her parents for the holiday, and I think it would be best if we had some time apart. She was upset and scared cause she has bad anxiety when she travels far alone. So her sister agreed to travel with her. But in this conversation, I asked to see the messages between her and my mom. My mom had bothered her for months with messages on Facebook asking how I was doing, if I was alive, and saying she doesn't get to hear from her son, E.T. That part is what got my wife to reply with an update on everything. She mentioned what I did at my work and named the place. Which there's only one location in our city. I knew she had been reached out to as me, my sister and her husband all had. But I didn't know she was constantly harassing my wife like that. Which, in the time between my mom showing up and this conversation. My mom sent several messages accusing her of setting her up, keeping her son from her and those very pleasant messages. She went to her parents' place. I made burgers and hung out with the dogs on Thanksgiving. I went over to my dad's that Friday, while everyone there was out doing Black Friday things. We hung up the Christmas lights and I told him what happened. Oddly, my dad didn't have much to say. He asked what I was gonna do. I asked him for a specific file he had, and I told him I'd show her the file. Wife comes home after almost week, and the day after, I sit her down and we have a conversation, and I pull out the file. She clearly didn't intend what happened, but she asked if I was divorcing her. I said no but she needed to have told me what happened and or blocked her. If she had insisted on messaging my mom. I should have been involved to make a more generic message. 
At this point, I opened the file, put it in front of her as she went completely pale. In the file were the pictures of me, the night my mom gave up custody. What happened was, we got into a fight over my grades in junior high. My mom started hitting me repeatedly, to the point where her nails had started to cut my face. At this point, I was big enough to stop her. I caught her wrist and I twisted it enough to where she stopped and ran out of the house. The police were called, cause my mom said, I broke her wrist, I didn't, my dad picked me up, took the photos of my bruised and cut face and my mom released custody to him. A few of these cuts left scars that are still visible on my cheek and sideburn area. After explaining what she was seeing, and she looked through what was in there. I told her she needed to understand she opened the door for my mom to have done this to me again. To my mom potentially doing that to her, and if we had any kids, they'd be at risk for the same of you. Cause my mom hasn't changed, her messages were the master manipulator going after my innocent wife. She said she didn't know it was this bad and she didn't mean that to have happened. I said we needed to go to therapy as a non-negotiable, and she agreed. I caught some heat from her parents for showing her the file. Her parents had me promise them I'd protect her and not ruin her innocent view of the world, I guess is the way to word it. She had a very slow grasp of real-world things that weren't very present in the church upbringing. Although, they actually agreed she shouldn't have responded to my mom. Which was surprising. I did some solo therapy before we did our couples therapy. She was a little upset because I was distant during the holidays. Like I wasn't there. Apparently, I had some kind of repressed or undiagnosed PTSD, and I began discussing again after that happened, and that was why I didn't seem like I was present. I feel like we are making progress. The therapist said my wife had this subconscious desire to fix things and make her perfect family because of some issues her parents had and some issues on both sides of her family. So that was likely why she responded without checking with me. We have stopped trying for a baby for now. Which she's devastated about presently cause one of my stepsisters announced she's pregnant and it really kind of hurt her cause she really wants to be a mom. We are spending time together again and sleeping in the same bed. She's tried really hard to make it up to me, and she's been trying to read more about Abu and understanding those things. Which is hard for her. We tried to get things back to normal throughout Christmas and New Year's. Presently we are doing our therapy every two weeks and I see my therapist the weeks in between. Thinking back, showing her the file with those pictures may have been a step too far. Our therapist said it was probably a lot for her to take in. But I said it in our session, and I said it the night of. She needed to completely understand what door she opened and what repercussions could have come from what she did and what could happen to our theoretical children if she opens that door again. I am not sure if there was an alternative to showing her that file, but I think she understands what I really went through. Now, my wife will sometimes rub the scar lines on my face and just give me this strange look. She never questioned those scars before and she just looks at them like that sometimes. That's where we are at. I think things are salvageable, as the way things came out before, it seemed like she sought out my mom. But I think she just got played and just attempted to give my mom some peace of mind but unintentionally made a problem that she didn't understand. Thank you again for those who reached out and offered support before. Unnecessary to read but for context. The example my wife gave in therapy about me not being present was this. We have a tradition in the second week of December, we go out together, get breakfast and do our Christmas shopping. Usually at Target cause she likes getting a Starbucks hot chocolate. But as we'd go through, she'd look back at me and I was often just staring off in the distance or not really giving full answers, and I admitted I didn't remember most of what we did that day. But she was sad because that's one of the things about the holidays she most looks forward to is that day together. It's concerning that the wife reached out to the abwife mother behind her husband's back and put their family in danger. Why would she do that without discussing it with him first? Please consider subscribing. It is free and we post new Reddit stories every day. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Have a miavelous day and see you in the next one.